Session one, the mechanics of labour. So, people will often ask us, how long do you think I'm going to be in labour for? That's really difficult to say because one woman's labour and birth experience is very different to another woman's labour and birth experience. And for each woman, each birth is different too. But if this is your first baby, then the length of time that you're likely to be in the active part of labour is equivalent in time to that of a waking day. Not a working day, a waking day. Think about the time you got up this morning. Think about the time you're going to go to bed tonight. That's roughly the amount of time you're likely to be in the active part of labour. Of course, it won't be as neat and tidy as setting your alarm clock for nine o'clock, having the first contraction and cuddling the baby for news at ten. No, it's likely to be halfway through one day into halfway through another, but it's likely to be equivalent in time to that of a waking day. So how many stages of labour are there? Most people would agree there's three stages of labour. The first stage where the neck of the womb is opening effectively around the baby's head. The second stage of labour where you're pushing the baby down through the birth canal and out into the world. And the third stage of labour, birthing the membranes and the placenta. So let's break that down a little bit and have a little look at that, what actually happens. So the first thing I want to show you is my favourite teaching aid, really, and that is my knitted womb. Can you see? I hope you can see that my knitted womb is um, in two colours here. So that is to really just show you. There's two groups of muscles here. Um, there's a, one group of muscles that are opening the neck of the womb here, and another group of muscles, the longitudinal muscles, that are pulling the neck of the womb up. So the circular muscles are opening the neck of the womb and the longitudinal ones are pulling them up. So all over your body, you have groups of muscles working together in a team and it's exactly the same in your womb. The neck of the womb being opened and pulled up around your baby's head. So um, I've got my knitted womb here. So first thing I want to just place in my knitted womb is, um, is my placenta. So my placenta is, of course, um, uh, vital for my baby. It is another organ, really, to my baby. It's giving it all the nutrients um, it needs, getting rid of, rid of all the waste products. And, of course, attached to it is the cord that's giving the baby um, all the blood rich in oxygen and getting rid of the deoxygenated blood. Of course, may I just say that from when the baby, from, from when you are about 37 weeks pregnant, at any one time, a third of the baby's blood volume is sitting in the placenta. So there's my placenta in my knitted womb. So now I'm gonna get my baby and I'm just gonna put my baby just to demonstrate to you inside of my knitted womb here. Just excuse me for a moment while I just position my baby into the womb. Okay, so you might be suspicious or you might think I'm in the active part of labor now. When you are feeling contractions that are coming and going in waves, lasting about a minute, a minute and a half, and taking your breath away. And those contractions are likely to be coming about every three to five minutes. So you're likely to feel about three of these contractions every 10 minutes. So lasting about a minute, and really taking your breath away and feeling them usually over the whole of your womb. We'll talk more about that in a, what they feel like um, in, in a further video. But for now, we'll just say that for you, when you're in the active part of labour, you're likely to feel these contractions about every three to five minutes, lasting a minute, taking your breath away. That would give you the clue that you're now in the active part of labour. Now, for us, we are going to be able to confirm that you're in the active part of labour most accurately by feeling inside of you.
So if we were to do a vaginal examination and feel inside of you, when we put our fingers inside of you, what we're going to feel is we're going to feel, if you're in the active part of labour, that the neck of the womb would be lying flat and flush around the top of the baby's head there, but there'll be an opening to the neck of the womb through, through which we can feel the top of your baby's head. And the amount of the top of the baby's head that we're likely to feel is at least four centimetres across. If you can't visualise what four centimetres looks like, four centimetres is about the size of a milk bottle top. So when the neck of the womb is open to about the size of a milk bottle top, that's when we would confirm that you're in the active part of labour. So that's four centimetres or beyond. The neck of the womb then is likely to open about half a centimetre to a centimetre an hour until it slips right back over the widest part of your baby's head. When the neck of the womb has slipped right back over the widest part of your baby's head, that's the end of the first stage of labour. That means you're going into the second stage of labour, the pushing stage of labour. When the neck of the womb has slipped back over the baby's head completely, sometimes we don't need to examine you to confirm this because there are plenty of external signs that will tell us that you're going into that second stage of labour. And again, we'll talk about this in subsequent videos. But when the neck of the womb has slipped back over the baby's head, if we do examine you to confirm, we're not going to be able to feel the neck of the womb anymore because it's slipped out of reach for us. It's slipped past the widest part of your baby's head. As I said, fully open, fully dilated, or 10 centimetres across, because often 10 centimetres is sort of the average diameter of the largest part of your baby's head. If you're trying to visualise what 10 centimetres might look like, it's about the size of a cheese triangle pot. So, if this is your first baby, this is average. Getting from this to this is going to take between 7 and 12 hours. And then that second stage of that baby um, coming down through the birth canal and out into the world, and I'll just very quickly show you, for now, my pelvis here. I don't know if you can see. Can you see? This is a life-size pelvis. You can see there isn't a lot of space for your baby to come down through the birth canal and out into the world. Your baby is an active passenger, if you like. And so I'm not sure if you can see this on um, this uh, on my video here but oh yes I think you can you can see all the bones on the baby's head there um, in real life the, those bones are not fused together until your baby is about a year old which means as the baby is coming down through the birth canal in that second stage of labour and out into the world then all those bones have the ability to overlap slightly to squeeze through a tighter space thus your baby being an active passenger it's doing its bit to come out into the world World. So the baby has come down through the birth canal and out into the world and you've got your baby up on your tummy um, and that to, uh, to birth your baby at uh, that second stage of labour usually takes, if you're Mrs Average again, about two hours to do that job and unless you tell us otherwise the, uh, the, the, the natural position that will always, um, uh, when you've birthed your baby, as your baby's born, is to help you just to put that baby up onto your chest or up onto your tummy for lovely skin to skin with your baby, which we'll talk about in a later video. So then the third stage of labour, the birthing of the membranes and the placenta, about five minutes to 45 minutes. So if you put those three times together, that first, second and third stage, the neck of the womb opening around the baby's head, pushing the baby down through the birth canal and out into the world, delivery of the membranes and placenta, there is your waking day. So why is it then, when we're pregnant, we always know someone who has a pregnancy tale to tell. Someone who, just when you're feeling really great about being pregnant and really looking forward to things, will say to you, I was in labour for three days. 
there's always someone with that birth story, isn't there? That's because um, there is another space in time that happens. So I'm just going to put my baby and my placenta and everything back into um, the knitted womb for a moment so I can demonstrate this to you. Because there is another space in time that happens before you get into the active part of labour. This is called the latent phase, the ripening phase, the preparing phase. This is the time before your body's in the active part of labour. During this preparing phase, you are likely to have contractions, but they're not going to be as strong and they're not going to be as regular as they are in the active part of labour. If I was to examine you internally at that time when the body's preparing to go into labour, it's unlikely the neck of the womb would be open to that size of the milk bottle top. It would be very likely that the neck of the womb would be fairly closed. In fact, it might be really quite tightly closed. If you can just imagine it here, there's my baby's head sitting further back. It's like just starting to put on um, a polar neck jumper. I think it's easier to demonstrate this to you using my funnel here. So if you imagine in that early part of labour, in the ripening phase, in the preparing phase when the body's getting ready to go into labour, what you have to imagine is the baby's head is like sitting, the neck of the womb there is like the, the wide part of the funnel. And in front of it you've got the long tubular bit. This almost has to be almost like drawn up inside of you, almost like melted away. And then what you're left with is the baby's head sitting in the wide part of that funnel with the opening to that wide part of the funnel, the size of that milk bottle top. Getting from this to this, for some people, takes barely any space in time at all. For others, getting from this to this can take a couple of days. That's why people say, I was in labour for three days, because they're including all of that time. And you can see, you can so see why that happens, because like I said, throughout the whole time, you will be having contractions or waves or surges, we'll talk about language in a while, but throughout that whole time, you will be having contractions but the ones you feel when the body's preparing to go into labour are not as strong or as regular as they are in the active part of labour. So in the videos that follow, we're going to show you lots of different things, including how you recognise where you are by what you're feeling, what the contractions are doing, how you recognise the ones that are the active part of labour, perhaps, as opposed to the ones where the body's preparing to go into labour.